This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be changing out an evaporator coil on a carrier unit, go figure. We've got some cool tools we're gonna to be showing off. We got a lift here, it's gonna make it really easy. Coil that's up on the roof is leaking in the middle. That makes it a little easier. Well, the unit we need is right over there. A lot better than running the ladder that we used the other day. All right, for those there that like to always complain about everything, that is not hurting the coil because we laid it down nice and gentle. Not everything has to be ram jam. Thank you, ma'am. Look, mom, no damage. So this technically is probably the first small little carrier evaporator I've had to replace. Thing was completely out of refrigerant, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing done and get it pulled apart. Well, we went ahead and unjuiced her there. Ain't a whole lot to this thing at all. I mean, it's tiny. You can see that it's just a Lego set here, it just pops together. Usually it's just heat exchangers that ain't any good. Coals are looking a little dirty too. Might have to go ahead and brush them off because that'll be the next problem we got. mode just finish perching out any air got burned in Got everything sprayed and touched up there. Got a strap back around it, that way it doesn't vibrate. End up hitting into something, causing it to leak. Make sure our gaps here are good. We still gotta get all these wires back into place yet. Go ahead, we'll go ahead and get started on our vacuum here. We got the NAVAC 4CFM pump here. We're gonna use the blue hoses. Done it both where I can lift it, you know, back it out and let the trader core close and then switch the hoses, but 
I kind of didn't like that. There's always a chance of it sucking back through the uh, core. All right, so we got a micron gauge set up here. You guys know the routine, unless you're new to the channel. Use the blue hoses here. We're using a 4CFM cordless vacuum pump. Normally 4CFM pump or even a 2CFM pump is not that fast, but that's usually because you're trying to go through your manifold here, which I've already proven multiple times is pathetically slow. This thing starts off really slow, builds up, it's DC driven. We're gonna shoot down to below 500, valve it off, see if it holds. It may raise as high as a thousand. This had some refrigerant in it. This had a nitrogen charge in it, so it was never completely emptied to the atmosphere. It's not gonna take that long to go down. Any time that it takes extra to get the microns down there is gonna be mainly just refrigerant boiling off and not moisture, which is what destroys the compressor. We are using valve core depressor tools here. That's gonna push the valve core down, give you the most possible CFM through there. We have a couple there that we could have pulled out the valve cores, but honestly, I don't feel like dealing with it. Just put a pressure test on it. Didn't go real super high. We got 115 on there. Sprayed all my joints. Nothing's leaking. So either we're leaking through this contraption or something, but the, the vacuum started rising right up really fast. We're holding right in there at 115.7. I don't know, 17 minutes. It should have been a lot lower than what it was. Okay, so we just restarted it. We're already at 2000 microns. So something must have been loose. I think these were loosening up. I took them apart, looked inside there, they were clean, they're greased up. I, I think something moved on it. So I went ahead and tightened those up fairly tighter. They just barely touch, so you don't really normally need to make them super tight, but it's obviously made a difference. We're already at 1900 and dropping, so the pressure test held. So about a one minute so far, and we're already at 1600. Not bad, beats me. There's 1500, let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Just reverse everything I did. No fancy photography here. I gotta wipe this crap off. You got that one brushed off. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one here. Like I said, this is a fairly new unit. It uh, shouldn't need washed out internally just yet. We'll check head pressure and see where we're at. If it does, we can always bring the five gallon bucket of water up here and rinse it out with the a port of blaster. We're at 955. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. Just a quick tap brings it on. You don't have to hold it for a long time. Same thing here with this. But you don't have to hold the button like you do for a field piece. So if you hit the button three times, it's gonna allow you to bleed out the solenoid. So one, two, three. There we go. We just bled through all of our hoses. Let's go ahead and valve this thing back off. Let me do it one more time just because I wanna make sure. Okay, I like to go through my suction and high side that way i know they're both clean and clear so we're, we're completely bled all air out all the way up to our service valves or to our valve core tools so this is just horrible horrible lighting because it is so freaking bright i got the sun literally right behind me blasting down what we want to do which we want to go into measurement mode you want to go to refrigerant charging we want to go to automatic charging for by weight. So we went up to target method or uh, target weight. We're pushing the up arrow there and we're going to 8.2 pounds is what this holds. So there's three, finally getting to a small point, 8.2. There we go. Hit the center button or the uh, menu button for enter. Okay, target. 8.2 weight on the scale zero pounds we're going to go ahead and open up our liquid here go ahead and tell it to go so i forget if i told it to weigh it in by pulses or not because pulsing will slow it down quite a bit i've gotten these i've gotten this display way too hot normally they turn black this one's turning white which is kind of weird and this thing's defense, my phone is overheating left and right. I don't understand why it's not that hot. I mean, it, it definitely is warm up here for sure. The sun, though, like I said, is directly right over top of us blasting down. So we've got 8.2 in there. We got zero there and there's a start button right there you couldn't see. Hit start. There it goes. Open up our valve. 
weight is going in. It did a little bit and it stopped. Let's go ahead and remove our micron gauge. So you just brought in some more again. Slowly adding it in spurts. That's an option you can turn on and off. I accidentally left it on. I did not want it for this. I really wanted to blast it all in there and not have it equalize on me. What I ended up doing is writing down that I have 1.3 pounds in there. Come down to here and it's just really hard to see. This, this sun is screwing with my phone. It's screwing with the gauges. It's, it just sucks. So up here it says pulse charging. We're gonna scroll up to that. There we go, we're on it. It was on, hit this enter button, now it's off. Come back down to manual char uh, input, hit enter. Now we gotta reduce that by a pound point three. 6.9, enter, go down here to okay. Charge scale has went back to zero. You hit the start button, there she goes. And she's going nonstop now, which is a whole lot better than on and off, on and off. I used the on and off because I was doing a small system, but right now it's adding, it's gonna take a little while. So if I wanna go ahead and start carrying stuff over there to the lift, I can go ahead and grab my stuff and start doing my, my cleanup while it's doing it, and then I don't stand there with it. So that's where you're gonna gain a little bit of time and efficiency. If you're just gonna sit there at it, I don't think it's worth it. But if you're gonna be productive and you're gonna move things around and you know keep busy, why not go ahead and utilize it i mean it's a little little bit of an investment right now we're at 2.8 pounds it's doing its thing it's still going chances are you know it may not get all that in there because i've lost some of my vacuum there uh you know the the refrigerator's gone into it and has boiled off so i don't have a lot of room for it to kind of go in as fast as normal but we're gonna let it continue to do that while we're doing it we can go ahead and start getting these screws in we got all the way up to 5.7 pounds it looks like here so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go back we're gonna pause it. We'll just throttle it in slowly through the suction side on the remainder there. We've got our yellow open. Everything's still connected. We're blinking. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these screws in. We've got the top back on. Got everything ready to go. Got the power on. I think the thermostat's turned off, so we're gonna go ahead and jump it out, make it run. We was able to keep our weight the same right here. The valve did shut off. Just had to turn it back on. Because all the weight is being supported right here on the edge, it didn't affect our weight scale at all. We got everything jumped out there. This coil here is clean, so we're good there. We got this panel back on, so we're not sucking hot air in. We'll go ahead and block this off so that we don't have high head pressure. Yes, you can run it through the little hole right there. I know about that, I just didn't do it. So we can go ahead and we can tell it to start now. And there it goes, you heard the click. We're gonna throttle it in slowly. All right, we finally got to start adding. I What happened was we've, we've like paused a big time in between it, things have gone to sleep. I mean, it don't do that if you're ready to roll, but it wasn't ready to roll. So we've gotten it all the way up to 7.2. I think it just stopped because it's not adding anything. So it's probably gonna slowly nickel and dime it automatically as we get close to it. Like I said, I haven't done this, so I don't know. You're learning with me here. Yeah, because we're open. And it's definitely hot down there. Uh, I'd say it should stop there. It's 8.2, 8.26. Um, I'd say it's done. So now if you go to optimize, Let's go ahead and make sure we don't add any by accident. Go to optimize, auto charging by weight, charging by superheat. We can go down by superheat and it can automatically do it by superheat. But for right now, let's just go ahead and go back to traditional mode. Let's go to, let's tell it to stop charging. Go into refrigeration and it should find my probes, which I've got in there. We are on 410A. So far I've used this for manual, and honestly, I like that better. I mean, the solenoid's pretty neat, but it's not often that you're gonna need it because there is a little bit of a hassle of having to hook up an extra hose there. Uh, Superheat is really low, we're like at one. Subcooling is at 18. This is one of those orifice systems in the manifold, so, Chances are, with me moving it around and stuff like that, I probably overcharged it. We'll probably have to remove a little bit out of it. 
We're gonna let it go. We're only running about 391 for head, and then, which is 114. I think we're probably about mm, 85 at least out here today. Let's see what we got. We'll let that stabilize. Well, it's already going above 90. So, so if at 90 and we're 115, that's 25. So chances are we are just a touch over. We'll let it stabilize here, but that's the gist of it right there. When you've got everything perfectly laid out and you got things on the ground, you don't have tops flopping around, solenoids falling down, stuff like that, it probably works really good. In this instance right here, I'm having a little bit of issue because I've got to rush the clock. I've got freaking trains going by. I've got dogs and cats up here playing with my leg. And, and I'll just make up all kinds of excuses, honestly. So we're going to go ahead and remove some of this refrigerant and go from there. So we're done with this. We'll go ahead and put it back in its case. That should give you a pretty nice case for it. it sets in there. They got a little foam thing there. This flops down. Got a place for your solenoid to go right there. That sets in there. You got a place for uh, extra batteries, things like that. This top flips back up. Velcro it in. Close it. Once it loses connection with the gauges, it goes to sleep. Simple as that. Boom, we're ready to roll. It'll be a lot easier once I, I've got to use it a few times. Right now, literally, the first time I tried to record it, things didn't go real good. This time it went a lot better. It really takes a little bit of, uh, of experience with it before you can sit there and say, oh yeah, here's how you do it. A lot of it's a user error right now. Well, we're definitely pulling out some moisture there. It's a new style trap there. It's supposed to automatically drain so it don't break, but it's got its issues and it breaks. Well, we repositioned onto the liquid line there. Subcooling's down a little bit now. We're around the nine mark. Superheat's around 2.5. I've had to make a few adjustments to it. Right now, we're just kind of waiting for it to stabilize. So I'm gonna go ahead and carry some more things down and give it some time to uh, finish stabilizing down. So I had to do a few adjustments here with it. We're running 46 degree of app, 61 uh, degrees on the suction. Come down to here, it's about 95 out here. Come down to 133 area, which is ballpark about right there come down you're about 52 I've got 62 technically I'm just a touch uh, under according to their chart but 15 degrees superheat to me is that's where I want to be at five degree subcooling it's not the highest there on that but the uh, superheats what I'm more worried about because I don't want the compressor damaged anyhow that was just kind of an example of how the uh, auto charge system works it probably would have worked just fine if I would have had everything ready to go and everything would have went in and you just know how to use the system the way you should. But I was so anxious to show it off. I didn't really know exactly what was gonna happen in your recording, so you make mistakes. Anyhow, it's a really cool system. It's gonna save you some time you, while you're moving back and forth, taking things to the truck. You can let it do its thing while it's running. It can also do it uh, superheat wise and subcooling both and balance it in there and it'll pulse it in. I haven't done that yet but it can do it. Other than that, it's running really good. It's brought the temperature down in there really quick. We've got plenty of water coming out of it and the system's working like it should. We didn't have any leaks. We went through that, made sure there was nothing leaking. Uh, we had just had a loose hose when we did it. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and unhook here and uh, get things put together. I got a no cooling call at one of their other units up here inside the building. So we're gonna go do that real quick, but that's gonna wrap this one up guys. If you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Check out the links for the tools down in the description down below. I have links to True Tech Tools. Get a 8% discount if you use survival as your discount code. And until next time guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.